Okay, so the problem question says find the savings plan balance after six months with an APR of 4% and a monthly payment of $250. Um, I wrote to assume that the account compounds monthly since the compound period is not provided. And this is pretty typical for savings accounts. So we're going to need the compound interest formula. Um, I wrote it here and then labeled all the parts. Okay, so we've got the final balance after some time in question is equal to the principal balance. But then on the inside of this term here, there's a one plus the interest rate written as a decimal over the number of compounding periods in one year. So we're compounding monthly, for example. So that's going to be 12 compound periods. But you know, if you're compounding daily, then that's 365 compound periods. Okay, we have N again up here, and then a T, and it's the time period of interest. Okay, and I don't mean interest as in this interest, I meant time period of what you're asking for. So after one month, two months, six months, two years, 10 years, etc. So <clears throat> we need this information how long we're accounting for, six months, which is half a year. And that's important because this is in years, not months. APR of 4% would be written as 0 0.04 and then a monthly payment of 250. So this is the really critical thing here when you're thinking about this problem is we don't just put in one amount and then just let it ride in this problem. It's not saying you put in 250 and you have an APR of 4% and you let it sit for six months. No, every month you're also adding $250. So this is going to complicate our problem a little bit. So what I decided to do is when I was writing my compound interest formula, okay, right, principal is 250. But really the principal is 250 each month. You're putting in another 250. So when I'm thinking about my time period of interest, I'm actually going to go through and calculate how much money do I have at the end of each month individually, okay? Um, in the, you know, if you're working on this on a homework or on a test, you don't really necessarily have a lot of time to be working out a general explicit formula for something where you're adding something new every month. So, uh, I basically worked out a recursive formula where I just went through and did, okay, month one, and then month two, month three, by month six, this is how much using my formula. So 250 is our monthly deposit. And then we've got the one plus 0 0.04 over 12 because of our rate and our number of compounding periods, 12. And then N again, 12 and one twelfth as the T, because like I said, I'm going to calculate this each month. Okay, so uh, if I do the inside of the parentheses, I get this number, 3333 ends up being a repeating decimal. So you can just cut it off anywhere you like. This is how far I went out. And then in terms of my calculations, in terms of to write it out explicitly, I decided to go with um, a letter instead of writing um, 1.033 every time. So I just wrote that as a small r so I can write this easier. So I'm going to show you the process. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, in month one, I have 250 times the interest rate. That was my amount. My final amount at the end of the month is 250 times the interest rate over that one month. Okay. Now in month two, well, month two, first I have the value I had in month one plus another $250. I'm adding more money at the beginning of the month. Now, by the end of the month, I compound my interest again to everything, month one plus 250. Okay, so put that into a calculator. This is what you get. Okay, this is just an alternate way to write it if you want to see what's going on. The interest rate is applying to both the first month again and the second month or the second deposit. Okay, month three, same thing. We go month the value at the end of month three is going to be the prior month's money month two plus the 250 dollars i deposit and then i apply the interest rate to that amount all together and we get this number in a calculator okay month three i follow that pattern okay 
month three times the interest rate, or sorry, for month four, month three times the interest rate plus my deposit, 250 times the interest rate for compounding. Okay, And then I just keep going that way. Okay. This more explicit distribution is just a better visual representation of what's happening. But um, when I use the calculator, this is actually how I did it. Okay, I basically just repeated this process. So this is a recursive formula. I cannot just find month six. I have to go through month one, then month two, then month three, then month four, four five, six, because each month depends on the month before it. If needed, if this asked, like find the balance after one year, two years, three years, et cetera, following this same pattern, I would have to go through and try to find an explicit formula um, that only relies on T, the amount of time that you're going for. But since I don't need to do that, I didn't need to waste my time. Um, and honestly, once you've figured out month one and month two, you can basically just keep going in the calculator. And I'll show you how I did that on a calculator. I'll share my screen for you. Um, but, you know, once you write down month one and month two, then it's just an iterative process. You just keep doing the same process in the calculator again and again, and you get your answer, which is this final one here at month six, okay, written in dollars. Now, of course, none of these, most of these aren't actually just two decimals. You just round off to what makes sense for money in the hundredths place. So I'm going to share my screen to show you kind of how I did this process in the calculator. Okay, so I have Desmos open, and you can see here, I start with month one times the interest rate, and I get the number. Then I rounded it off. Then month two is month one plus another 250. Then I take that amount and multiply it by 1.033. And then um, I accidentally hit enter here instead of doing parentheses. So this time I did the parentheses. So I take month the prior month, months two, add 250, and then multiply everything by 1.033. Then pull that answer in here, do the same thing, pull that answer down here, do the same thing, pull that answer down here, do the same thing. Okay, and that gives us your final number. So once you've got it one and two figured out, the rest is just retyping the numbers in the calculator. And you know, like with um, Desmos, you don't have to, um, retype the answer or even a calculator you know you have a function that allows you to pull an answer down from a prior amount and i could repeat the process okay. so that is how we would solve this particular one